Testimony time. Make it louder. My breakthrough time. Let's pay attention to these documented testimonies and ours shall come shortly. Number one. Now a chartered accountant after seven attempts. I enrolled as a student in the Institute of Chartered Accountants. Since November 20. Oh, 09, I had been writing my professional level one exams. I wrote it four times before I could cross over to my professional level two. The same thing happened again. I had references in my professional level two papers. During Easter Sunday service in April, the bishop prophesied, you shall not be found writing the same exams again by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. He has never said that before, so I held on to it. While studying, my spirit told me to recount how many times I had taken the exams. Meanwhile, this one was the seventh time I would be sitting for ICANN exams. Then, my spirit said, seven means perfection. God is going to perfect everything that concerns you. I went for my exams with those two words in mind. In my office, everybody had the feeling that I had passed. I was just writing one paper. So I didn't relent on my effort. To God be the glory, my result came out today. Now I'm an associate chartered accountant after writing the exam seven times. I thank God for changing my level. Cain De O is a testifier. Let's give Jesus a very big hand of praise. Number two, supernatural turnaround after contacting this commission. Give Jesus a big hand. In 2016, I attempted to commit suicide because I was frustrated. However, my mother-in-law rescued me and brought me to this commission. Let's celebrate Jesus. The first time I had Bishop David Oyedepo minister, I was imparted and I gave my life to Christ. While he welcomed those worshipping for the first time, he said that if nothing changed in our lives after three months of worship, we are free to leave. I held on to those words, prayed and believed God for a change of story. In 2017, things began to turn around for me. Let's celebrate Jesus. I bought a car and my husband who was not educated became a manager of one of the big hotels in Nigeria. Are you celebrating Jesus? <laughs> Lastly, some months ago, I had pains in my right leg, but last week after cleaning the sanctuary, the pains ceased. I am totally healed. I give God all the glory. Deborah Ajiboye is the testifier. Make your hand clap big, big, big for Jesus. Rise with me this morning. Lift up your hands and celebrate God for these testimonies. Lift your voice and appreciate God. Give glory unto him. Give praise to his name and celebrate him from the depth of your heart this morning. Thank him for this marvelous acts. Give him the glory due unto his name. Thank him and do it from the depth of your heart. Father, we say thank you. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. You are worthy of all honor. You are worthy of all adoration. Make sure you are thanking him from the depth of your heart. Give him the praise and the glory. Give him the praise and the glory. Also for the answers he has given to our prayers. Now begin to also ask him to speak to you this morning. Lord, speak to me today by your word. Let your word change and transform me. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Our Father, we thank you today for the blessing of being in your presence. We thank you, Lord, because of the testimonies of your mighty hand that work in our midst. We give you all the glory. For the answers to our prayers, we are grateful. And now, Lord, our eyes are upon you, asking that you will speak to us this morning. By your word, let every one of us be changed and transformed. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please, you may be seated 
in his presence. It is my year of breaking limits. Our line of exhortations for this week has been biblical requirements towards encounters with the resurrected Christ. Biblical requirements towards encounters with the resurrected Christ. According to scriptures in Acts chapter 1 and verse 3, we are told there, he said, to whom he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. He said, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Clearly, according to scriptures, post-resurrection is a season of encounters. And we are made to understand clearly that, uh, that it is the encounters that an individual has that determines what becomes of his or her life. In 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, we are told there, he said, we all with open face, beholding him as in a glass, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. It is encounters that determines our transformation. In fact, encounters are the distinguishing factor in any individual's life and destiny. What becomes of each one is determined by the encounters that he or she has. And that is why we must recognize what it takes to align appropriately for encounters in this season. My prayer is that within this season, none of us will miss our encounter with the resurrected Christ. Amen. Somebody believe you say it louder, amen. amen. Now, what are the requirements? We are going to look at two of them very quickly this morning. And I trust that the Holy Spirit will grant us understanding. Number one is one must engage in prayers of inquiry. One must engage in prayers of inquiry. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3, the Bible makes clear to us, it says, Call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Very clearly we must recognize that God is interested in presenting answers to our questions. Inquiries are vital, you know, deliveries in the season of encounters. God's servant, our father, has said many times that give me, give me is the prayer of children. But when it comes to maturity in the realm of the spirit, it's show me, show me. That is the prayer of spiritual adults. In other words, knowing what to do, knowing what step to take, is what makes the difference between the immature and the mature, spiritually speaking. But if we are going to see what God is showing, we must seek it on the altar of prayer. The altar of prayer is the altar where we make inquiries, where we ask questions. So God is not only the prayer answering God, God is also the question answering God. And we have this illustrated all through the scriptures. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, after David was anointed king from verse 18 all the way down to verse 26, we are made to understand that the Philistines gathered against him in the valley of Raphim. And the Bible tells us there that David inquired of the Lord, Lord, will you deliver them into my hands? Should I go up against them? And the Lord answered, go up. He said, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hands. And we know the story. David went up after that instruction and discomfited the Philistines. But the Bible said that the Philistines gathered again in the same valley at the same place. And the Bible says David again inquired of the Lord, should I go up? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord spoke to David and said, thou shalt not go up but fetch a compass round, round about them. He said, and when you hear the goings on the mulberry trees, he said, then bestir thyself, because then the Lord has gone before you. In other words, you discover that it was each one of the inquiries that gave access to the results that David saw. If we are going to get results, then we must understand the power of inquiries. Making inquiries on what to do, what step to take, is vital in determining the outcome of our journey on the, day, on the earth here. In the book of Psalm chapter 27, in verse 4, this is how the Bible puts it there. David speaking. He said, one thing I have desired of the Lord. 
He said, this is what I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and do what? And to inquire in his temple. David was a man committed to inquiries, to inquire at his temple. So the altar of prayer is an altar of inquiries. That's why that scripture is so important. Call unto me and I will answer you. But not only that, I will show to you greater mighty things which thou knowest not. So in prayers, God answers questions. And this is one of the vital ways we see him appearing to his people as they position themselves for heaven's intervention. Number two, one must be in active service for the Lord. If you are going to position yourself for an encounter with the resurrected Christ, one must be in active service for the Lord. In Acts chapter 10, beginning from verse 9 all the way down to verse 20, we have this encounter experience how that Peter had gone up to the housetop according to scripture to pray. And right there as he was praying and the Bible says that a vision came forth. And then, you know, this vessel was let down with all kinds of living beasts upon it. And he was told, kill and eat. And he said, no, I've not, never taken anything that is unclean. And the Lord showed, he said, don't call that which, is, which I've called clean unclean. It happened three times and then suddenly a visitation. And the Bible says that while he was thinking on the vision, he said that the Holy Spirit said, three men are seeking you. Now go with them, doubting nothing. And that became the opening of the ministry to the Gentiles. But what was Peter doing there in Antioch? He was there on assignment. You see, those who are, who are on the go for God, who are active in stewardship for God, will never lack the visitation of, of God. In Acts chapter 16, we have another experience there of Paul the Apostle from verse 6 to 9. As he was going on assignment for God, the scripture says that a man appeared and said, come to Macedonia and help us. And that opened up a new dimension to the life and ministry of Paul, simply by being active in service. Also in Acts chapter 18, the Bible shows us verse 9 and verse 10, how that Paul the Apostle was in a city. He said, and the Lord spoke to him in, in, in the night by a vision and said, be not afraid, but speak, hold not your peace. He said, because I have much people in this city. And as you are acting for me continu continuously, he said, no man will be able to set upon thee to hurt thee. He was a man on assignment and therefore a man of continuous visitation. You discover that those who are active for God never lack his visitation. Those who are active in stewardship for God will never lack his visitation. Therefore, as each one of us continues to remain active, engaging on the altar of prayer, reaching out and making calls and making contact with all of those that we have access to, seeing to their draft, seeing to their connection to Christ, I'd like each one of us to be expectant because as we do so, the resurrected Christ will begin to make visitations in our direction in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. It's important for us to understand that God can manifest himself to us anywhere and at any time. We have the example of Saul before he became Paul. In Acts chapter 9, beginning from verse 2 down to verse 6, the Bible says he was on the road to Damascus. And as he was going there, on that road, suddenly a light appeared. You see, he can appear at any time. This was a man on horseback, but right there, suddenly, there was an instant appearance. On the basis of his, you know, sensitivity, there was an appearance. The Bible says there were many together, but only he heard the voice. Everyone else just saw the commotion, but only Paul heard the voice. And the voice that he heard made him a voice to his generation. It's important for us to understand that the moment we position ourselves actively in, with sensitivity, we begin to enjoy the full delivery of the visitation that God has in store for us. This is why what the scripture says to us is very important. It says, what I say to one, I say to all, watch, watch, watch. Be on the lookout. Be active in your pursuit. Be active in your sensitivity. Be on the lookout. What I say to one, I say to all, watch. 
Jesus taught us continuously all through the scripture. He said, watch and pray. Be sensitive at all times. Don't just be full of activity alone. Be full of sensitivity also. When you position yourself with sensitivity, then you begin to enjoy supernatural visitation. My prayer is that for each one of us in this season, none of us will lack or miss out on the visitation of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. amen. Shall we rise on our feet, everyone? Lift your voice. Lord, I receive grace to remain sensitive. I receive grace to remain sensitive. I receive grace to remain sensitive. I receive grace to remain sensitive in this season of visitation. I receive grace to remain sensitive. Thank you, Father, and thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand as we receive God's servant and Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. Only those who ask questions are entitled to answers. Shall I go up? Now that I have mastered the place, I know what to do. Then God showed up. I said, go up. The job is done. Another time now, assumption. Shall I go up? Don't go. You just wait. Until so and so thing happen. Then go up and you have the victory. Lord, shall this ministry move out to Kaduna? Or remain here in the Lord. My wife and I were praying, and Jesus came. Stand up. Life. Early morning. And I did. I take your Bible. And I did. And then Acts 22, verse 10, jumped out. And I said, Lord, what shall I do? Direct. And the Lord said, Arise and go to Damascus. Direct. In response to the question asked. He brought the answer direct from Scripture. I wasn't flipping. He didn't say, open to us, chapter 10, 22, verse 10. As I opened my Bible, that's the page that opened. And as I put my eyes on the Bible, that's the one I saw. Direct. Oh, Lord, why is this church not growing? Why are we crawling? This is not the way to go. Jesus, what's going on? What's getting wrong? What are we missing out? And then on the third day, stand up and follow me. Life. Broad day, afternoon. And I followed him. And I, we got to him and said, now turn back from here. And I turned back. And I saw a layer of, you know, um, darkness on the top of the roof of the church. So that's the blindfolding weapon the devil uses to misinterpret what I, Jesus, am doing in this church. Amen. Amen. And gave four clean instructions. Then our church growth revival began. Hallelujah. In response to asking questions. I was on my way to Enugu and I was in Makodi when the Lord said to me, don't raise money, raise men. And you have more money than you ever need for ministry. Life. I was in the car. You are in service, you are in touch with his encounters. Amen. Amen. Please take advantage of this season. Why is my health going up and down? What's going on? What's going wrong here? I know nothing is ever wrong with you. If anything is wrong, it's wrong with me. That which I know not teach me. Show me the way out of this predicament. I'm long overdue for a change of story. You ask sincere questions, you're entitled to sincere answers. You won't miss your encounter this time. Amen. You are the principal actor on all issues concerning your life. It is we that initiate our God response to us. This season is vital. Don't miss it for anything. I therefore decree today another day of divine encounters Amen. for everyone under the sound of my voice. Amen. You have heard the word of the Lord and I've given you some life examples to let you know it's time to ask questions. Nobody goes about houses asking, do you have questions? No. No, people have questions, ask them. <laughs> people have questions, they ask them. Whatever question you genuinely ask, not 
accusing God, not justifying yourself against God. Many believers are in problem because I've done everything God said. Is this God reliable? They won't say that. But by saying I've done everything means you are displaying your ignorance. Have you done the right thing? Everything and the right thing is not the same. Have you done the right thing? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody's destiny is turning around. Amen. Lift up those two hands. Praise God. Prayer and sing I like you to sing it with confidence now. Prayer and sing Praise Tim, take it up. Right? Prayer answering God, you deserve. You're the prayer answering God. You are, you are the prayer answering God. Prayer answering God, you deserve. Prayer answering God. With the prayer answering God. You are the prayer answering God. We call you prayer answering God. You are worthy your prayer. You are answering God. You desire the prayer. God. You are worthy your prayer. You are worthy your prayer. You desire the prayer. You desire the Lord. your prayer. in the time appointed and the day of salvation of Sokodi, behold now is the accepted time behold today is the day of salvation if you walk with that exhortation we had I will inquire in this temple the Psalm 27 verse 4 make your inquiries today and you'll be out of that crossroad because it's always there. Hallelujah. The day is declared your day. Everything answers in your favor today. Your time in his presence will produce amazing results. There is no question you ask today that will not find an answer through an encounter. So shall it be. It shall be a most refreshing day, Amen. a most enriching day, Amen. and a most empowering day. Amen. Again, coronavirus is caused, Amen. and it's caused from the roots. Amen. It shall no longer kill. Amen. Heaven has placed a verdict. Yes. It's enough. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you. for liberating the nations of the earth. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For liberating mankind from this scourge. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring life back to our street across the nations of the earth. Thank you, Jesus, for opening up our schools all across the nations. In the name of Jesus, 
Thank you, Lord, for opening up the marketplaces everywhere and in every nation. To you be all the praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks. It's your day. Lift your voice and give glory to God. Appreciate him and celebrate him. Give him the glory due unto his name. Thank him and thank him and thank him. Give him praise, give him glory, give him honor. Give adoration unto him. Father, we say thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. It's my year of breaking limits. Then what eyes have not seen nor ears heard shall be your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations, amen, and amen. You are blessed.